Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and today is seventh April two thousand and twenty-one. The day is Wednesday, and today I am with the eleven Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is physics five zero five four. And today we have set our hearts to solve uh, October November two thousand twenty uh, physics five zero five four two one paper. It's a theory paper. and this paper belongs from the variant 1 this theory paper is from zone 1 and in this session in this video and in today's class we will be solving only the section a of this video section uh, sorry sorry section b of this video and this paper and the section a of this paper i will solve in another session in another video and you can find that video in my youtube channel so today we are only going to solve the section a section b of this section b of this paper so let's start by mistake i said section a section b of this paper we are going to solve so the section b of this paper is showing on your screen this is the density of the water in a lake is 1000 kg per meter cube at a depth of 25 meter beneath the surface of the lake the total pressure is 3.5 into 10 to the power 5 pascal so total pressure there the total pressure under the water will be the pressure due to the water plus the atmospheric pressure the total pressure means this total pressure at the depth of 25 meter will be the pressure due to the water plus the atmospheric pressure and that is 3.5 x to the power 5 pascal the first question is state what is meant by the pressure the pressure is the force acting on unit area the force acting on unit area that is called pressure the force acting on unit area if for example if one newton force is acting on an area of 1 meter square the pressure will be called 1 pascal so let me show you my definition and here we go the definition i have written is on your screen i think i hope it is visible to you pressure is the force in newtons acting on a unit area for example 1 meter square if one newton force acts on 1 meter square area pressure will be 1 pascal so uh, let's go to the next question the next part is the gravitational field strength is 10 newton per kg determine the pressure due to 25 meter of the water here we have to find out the hydrostatic pressure the hydrostatic pressure of the water is very simple pressure is equals to rho g h the formula is rho g h where rho is the density of the water g is the gravitational field strength and h is the depth of the water above that point so very simple i have done this in a paper let me show you my work and so the pressure is equal to rho g h the value of the density is 1000 the value of the g is 10 and the value of the depth of the water above the point of observation is 25 meters simply multiply them and the final answer will be 2.5 x to the 5 pascal let's check the marking scheme for these two parts and see what the marking scheme says the marking scheme which is showing on your screen the normal force per unit area or the force divided by area and the pressure the final answer will be 2.5 x to the 5 pascal i hope you have understood question number 8 part a b first part let's move to the next part is this the question is the atmospheric pressure you know you know the total pressure the total pressure was given here for example the total pressure acting was given that is 3.5 x to the 5 pascal and we know the pressure of the water from the total pressure if you will subtract the pressure from the total pressure subtract the pressure of the water the remaining will be the atmospheric pressure so i have done this on a paper let me show you my work so you know the total pressure is equals to the pressure of the water plus the pressure of the atmosphere the total pressure is 3.5 x to the 5 equals to the pressure of the water is 2.5 x to the 5 plus pressure of the atmospheric is question make the pressure of the atmosphere subject of the formula and you will have 3.5 x to the 5 minus 2.5 x to the 5 on your calculator just enter this value and you will get the answer 1 x to the 5 pascal so the atmospheric pressure is 1 x to the 5 pascal 
and I hope you have understood this. Uh, let's check the marking scheme for this answer. And you know we have, uh, this is one mark question and the final answer should be one Expo 5 Pascal. An underwater depth gauge contains a small cylinder as shown in the figure 8.1. Gas is trapped inside the cylinder by a piston. The piston is free to move. So this is a gauge which can tell you the depth of the water. When you will take this gauge into the water, uh, the piston will move into, uh, in, uh, into the cylinder. And when you bring it out, the piston will move out. So this uh, gauge is used to measure the depth of the water. The outer face of the piston is in, is in contact with the water. As the depth gauge is lowered into the water, the piston moves into the cylinder. This moves a needle on a dial to indicate the depth of the gauge in the water. Explain why the piston moves into the cylinder. You see, when you take this gauge into the water. The pressure of the air inside, that will not change. But when you move down in the, in the water, as the depth of the water will increase, the pressure of the water will increase. As you go deeper and deeper and deeper, the pressure of the water will increase. It means the pressure outside that gauge, that will increase. And the pressure of the uh, gas which is inside that cylinder, that is kind of not changing that much. But the pressure outside, as the depth is increasing, the pressure of the water will be increasing. So the outside pressure will be larger and the pressure of the gas inside will be smaller. So due to the pressure difference, there will be a resultant force acting on that gauge. And that will be directed towards the inside of the cylinder. So the piston will move into the cylinder. I have written this answer. Let me show you that and then we will check the marking scheme. As the gauge goes deeper into water, pressure of water will increase. Pressure of gas inside the gauge is smaller than pressure of the water. So a resultant force acts on piston and it will move into the cylinder. The piston will move into the cylinder. It's a three mark question, a very important three mark question. Let us check the marking scheme. The marking scheme for the B's, uh, this uh, A, C, second part, first part, sorry. It's a three mark question. One mark for saying that the pressure increases with the depth. He's talking about the pressure of the water. Pressure uh, or force on outer surface greater than that on the inner face. For So the, the piston inside the gas pressure is acting and outside the water pressure is acting. And the outside water pressure is greater. Resultant force on the piston. So inner pressure is lower. The pressure from the inside, which is due to the gas, that is lower. And the outside pressure, which is due to the water, that is larger. So there will be a resultant force acting, its direction of the resultant force will be into the cylinder. So the piston will move into the cylinder as you go deeper and deeper. Okay, so the next question, the temperature of the gas does not change as the piston moves into the cylinder. Explain in terms of molecules what happens to the pressure of the trapped gas as the piston moves into the cylinder. So try to understand this. It's a, it's a normal and a very famous question. He says that temperature of the gas does not change. This is very important. The, the temperature of the gas does not change and the piston is moving in. So the volume of the gas which is inside the cylinder, that is decreasing. So when the volume of that gas will decrease, the pressure of that gas should increase. But his question is what will happen with the molecules? You see the temperature is not changing. You cannot say one thing. You cannot say that the molecules have started moving faster. And other thing which you cannot say that the kinetic energy has increased. You cannot say these two things because the temperature is constant. You see, when the piston is moving in and the temperature is constant, the molecules will come closer to each other. Their collision frequency with the walls of the container will increase. The 
number of collisions per unit area will increase the molecules will have to travel less distance to collide with the walls of the container that's why the pressure of the gas will increase that's a three mark question i have written this answer let me show you my answer and then we will check the marking scheme pressure piston that is the reason that the pressure of that gas will increase i hope you have understood Oh, my dear students, again, I, I, my apologies because of the internet. Uh, all of a sudden, the call was stopped, the recording was on, and so uh, there is a one minute or two minutes uh, disruption. So I hope that uh, we were on this question. At the surface of the water, the volume of the trapped gas in the depth bridge is V0 on uh, figure 8.2. Sketch a graph to show how the volume of the trapped gas decreases as the gauge is lowered into the water. As the gauge will go deeper and deeper, as the depth will increase, the depth is shown on the x-axis, the volume will decrease. The volume will decrease, but the volume will never become zero. Remember this. So the volume will decrease, and you will draw it with a decreasing curve, and the gradient will be also decreasing. So you draw a decreasing curve with the gradient gradually decreasing. So let me show you my work. I have drawn this on a paper. So you have to draw like this, a decreasing curve. This graph is like, uh, you know, uh, the curves of uh, when the two quantities are inversely proportional to each other, we draw these kind of curves. So in this part, you have to draw this kind of curve. So hopefully you can do this. It's a two-mark question. So let me check the marking scheme, what the marking scheme says. The marking scheme says, question number eight, C, third part. The marking scheme says that the curve with the negative gradient and the gradient of decreasing magnitude. Negative gradient at V naught and approaches x-axis asymptotically. Asymptotically, sorry. Uh, Asymptote is when the graph, if you have done uh, the quadratic, uh, the graphs of quadratic equation, you must have seen they make a U shape, parabola shape, sad face and happy face. And that is uh, asymptote. So no asymptote here, okay? <laughs> if you have studied mathematics, then you understand what I am saying. 
Okay, so we are moving to the fourth part. Question number eight, and it's C. Question number eight, it's C portion, and I am going to do its fourth part. The instructions for the depth gauge states that each time it is used, the needle of the dial must be reset to zero at the surface of the water. So just one reason for this. You see, wherever you take this instrument, everywhere the atmospheric pressure will be different. So when you put the gauge at the surface, you are not uh, gone underwater. When you are on the surface of the water, you manually make the gauge zero. Because on different locations around the world, the atmospheric pressure is different. So whatever is the atmospheric pressure locally there, at, the, at that point, make the needle of that dial zero. Because the atmospheric pressure everywhere will be different. So due to that, you have to manually make it zero for your local, wherever you are taking the reading. On different locations, the atmospheric pressure will be different. So manually, we make gauge zero before exerting it into the water. Before putting the gauge into the water, everywhere, wherever you use it, on the dial, make it yourself manually zero. Because everywhere, the atmospheric pressure is different. So let's check the marking scheme. What the marking, sees, marking scheme says about this. <coughs> It says atmospheric pressure varies or temperature varies. On different locations, the temperature is different, the atmospheric pressure is different. Okay, so let's move to the next part. He says the fifth part, eight C part, the density of the air trapped in the depth gauge increases. The density of the water remains constant. Explain in terms of molecules of water why the density of the water remains constant. You see, the air it can be compressed. So it means its volume can be decreased. When the volume will decrease, its density will change. Its density will become larger. Whereas the water is incompressible. You cannot bring water molecules further close to each other. The reason is the liquid water is incompressible. The, it's very important sentence. The repulsive force between a molecule of water and the other molecule of water is very, very strong. Remember this sentence. The repulsive force between the molecules of water with each other is very strong. So it's not possible to compress the water molecules. It's not possible to bring the water molecules further close to each other. That's why the density of the water remains constant. Let me read my answer. I have written this answer. Water is incompressible. Repulsive force between water molecules is very strong. So they cannot be brought further closer and their volume cannot be decreased. That's why the density cannot be changed of the water. Let me show you the marking scheme. Uh, question number eight, C, fifth part. The molecules touching are very close together and cannot be forced closer. Repulsive forces between molecules very large. I hope you have understood this. Let's move to the next question. So we are, uh, this is uh, the question we are, the paper today we are doing is winter or October, November 2020 to one paper. And in this video, we are going to solve it section B. We are done with the question number eight of this uh, Question number eight of this paper. So uh, now we are going to start question number nine. And let's start question number nine. A small glass measuring cylinder of oil is placed inside a freezer. So you have a glass, measuring cylinder made of glass. And it has oil in it. 
and you have placed it inside a freezer where the temperature is minus 18 degree centigrade the temperature of the freezer is minus 18 degree centigrade on the figure 9.1 shows how the temperature of the oil varies with the time t so it's a cooling curve the temperature of the oil is 20 degree centigrade and you have put it in the freezer so now its cooling will start so the temperature will drop you see the temperature as the time will pass by the temperature will drop and here you can see the temperature has become constant and then again the temperature has started dropping so you see uh, figure 9.1 shows that it takes 700 seconds for the temperature to decrease from 20 degrees centigrade to 10 degrees centigrade but that takes 1900 seconds to decrease from 0 degree centigrade to minus 10 degree centigrade. Suggest so why these times are different. You see, the temperature has changed from 20 to 10 degree centigrade. So there is a drop of 10 degree centigrade and that has taken seven, 700 seconds. Then the temperature dropped from 0 to minus 10 degree centigrade. It's a change of 10 degree centigrade. But this change took 1900 seconds. So the question is why the time that the change in the temperature both uh, in both the situations the change in the temperature is same but the time taken and in the first situation only 700 seconds was taken and in the second situation 1900 seconds are taken and why is this so you see when the temperature dropped from 20 to 10 the temperature difference between the oil and the freezer is quite large that the oil was at 20 degrees centigrade and the freezer was at minus 18 degrees centigrade. So the temperature difference between the hot oil and the cold freezer, that temperature difference is very large. When the temperature difference between the hot body and the cold body is larger, the rate of the loss of the heat will be very faster. So the temperature for the, for the drop of 10 degrees centigrade, here the time taken will be 700 seconds. It will be very quick. The reason is the temperature difference between the hot body and the cold body is quite large. So uh, then in the second situation, when the temperature drops from 0 to minus 10 degrees centigrade, now the temperature of the oil is 0 degree centigrade and the temperature of the surrounding or the freezer is minus 18 degree centigrade. This time, the temperature difference between the oil and the freezer, between the hot body and between the cold body, is relatively smaller. When the temperature difference between the hot body and the cold body is relatively smaller, then the rate of heat loss will also be smaller. That's why the time taken to decrease the temperature of 10 degrees centigrade, this time it has taken 1900 seconds. So I have written this answer. Let me show you my answer. And it says, uh, let me increase the size. When the temperature dropped from 20 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade, the difference of the temperature between oil and freezer was larger. So the rate of heat loss was greater. It took 700 seconds. When the temperature drops from 0 to minus 10 degrees centigrade, the temperature difference between oil and freezer was smaller. So the rate of heat loss was also smaller. So it took 1900 seconds. I hope you have understood this. Let's let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says, it's a three mark question. A one mark for saying that the oil hotter initially or cooler finally. And one mark is for saying the temperature difference between oil and the freezer gradually decreases. And one mark is for saying that the losses energy faster. This loses energy, sorry, faster when hotter or more slowly when cold. When the oil becomes colder, it loses the energy slowly when it was hotter. It loses energy very fastly. So that was question number nine, a part, a little difficult to answer to answer. So uh, let's move to the next part. He says, explain what happens to the molecules of the oil and what happens to the level of the oil in the glass mining cylinder as the temperature decreases from 20 to 0 degrees centigrade. You see, uh, when the temperature will go from 20 degree to 0 degree centigrade, the molecules of the oil, they will come closer to each other. Their kinetic energy will decrease. Their uh, potential energy, the intermolecular potential energy will increase. 
their kinetic energy will decrease so um the mali so the, the the oil will contract the glass in the the the, the beaker that is made of glass the mali cylinder that is made of glass that will also contract but that is solid so in the solid the contraction will be smaller uh, oil is liquid the contraction here will be larger so that's why there will be a drop in the level of the oil you will see a visible drop in the level of the oil in the mirroring cylinder so it's a three mark question let's check what i have written and then we will see the marking scheme also so question number 9 b part when the temperature uh, decreases oil molecules move slowly their kinetic energy decreases oil contracts molecules move closer glass also contracts but the glass is solid so glass contract less as compared to the oil so the level of the oil will drop in the mirroring cylinder so let's check the marking scheme and what the marking scheme see another question here very simple quickly do that and then we will check the marking scheme after this he asks to determine the melting point of the oil from this graph i can tell you the melting point is when this graph becomes flat because during the melting during the state change the temperature do not change so this was a uh, liquid and here the graph has become flat so it means the melting point is minus 10 degree centigrade so let's check the marking scheme what the marking scheme says so question number 9 b part molecules move uh, more slowly or less kinetic energy or less internal energy level decreases and oil contracts volume of the oil decreases and then it says oil liquid contracts more than glass solid or molecules move closer and the melting point is minus 10 degree centigrade i hope you are able to write your answer um so uh, let's uh, go to the next part we are done with this we are done with this part okay explain in terms of molecule why the temperature of the oil does not change between uh, time 3600 seconds to time uh, 1 seconds you see during this duration what happened the oil was converting from the liquid state into the solid state and solidification was taking place a state change was taking place when this happens the temperature do not change so when the temperature do not change it means the speed of the molecules will not change it means the kinetic energy of the molecules will not change but what will happen the molecules will come close to each other and they will be fixed on their fixed positions and the intermolecular forces will will be strong it will make, make intermolecular bonds with the so when they make the intermolecular bonds with each other you know their potential energy will increase intermolecular potential energy will increase the uh, liquid will convert into the solid it's a three mark question let me show you my answer and then we will see what the what the mark scheme says attractive intermolecular forces become stronger liquid converts to solid intermolecular potential energy decreases latent heat is lost oh yeah this is very important that the thermal energy which is given out and uh, that is the latent heat latent heat is given out and you can see Question number nine, second part. I I hope that this is showing on your marking screen. On the screen, it has been somehow. Yeah, now it's showing. C second part. Attractive intermolecular forces between molecules or liquids solidify. Intermolecular potential energy decreases as the molecule moves closer. sorry intermolecular potential energy will decrease in my when i was describing i by mistake i said intermolecular potential energy will increase thermal energy lost due to the freezer is potential energy lost or it is latent heat lost 
Okay, so one mistake which I just made is that the intermolecular potential energy decreases. Okay. The next question. It is question number nine. D part, there is a 45 gram of oil in the glass mating cylinder and the specific latent heat of fusion a melting of the oil is 5.7. Expo 4 joules per kg. Calculate the energy transfer from the oil between the 3600 seconds to the 1800 seconds. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the state was changing during this process. So, very easily we can find out the energy. And the formula is heat is equals to M multiply L. You see the specific latent heat of fusion is given here. And it is 5.7 Expo 4 joules per kg. And the mass is also given here. The mass is 45 gram. So one difference, uh, which is very important, you should understand this. The mass is 45 gram. And the, and the, the, the specific latent heat of fusion, it is 5.7 expo 4 joules per kg. The unit of the mass is kg and the unit of mass there is gram. So the units are not consistent with each other. So that 45 gram must be converted into kg. For that purpose, you divide it with 1,000. 45 divided by 1,000, it will be converted into kg. So let me show you my work. I've done this numerical. And here we go. This is on your screen. So heat will be equal to M multiply L. 4.7 multiplied 10 is power 4. That is the last specific latent heat. Multiply the mass is 45 gram. I will divide it with 1000 to convert it into kg. So the final answer will be 2430 joules. 2430 joules. The next part is the average rate at which the energy is transferred from the oil between T 3600 seconds to T 10,800 seconds. So if you want to find out the rate of the transfer of the energy, you have to divide the amount of energy divided by time. So how much time this took? 3600 second to 10,800 second. So the time I can tell from 800, 10,800 seconds subtract the 3600 second. And that is the time duration when this energy was given out. So I know the amount of energy and now I, I know the time taken so I can find out the rate at which the energy is transferred. So I've done this on a paper. You see uh, yeah, here on your screen, you can see the rate of energy transfer is equals to energy divided by time. So there was 2430 joules of energy and the time taken is 4800 seconds. You know how I got this 4800 second time? 10,800 minus 3,600. So you got 4,800 seconds. You divide it. The answer will be 0 0.50625 watt. 0 0.50625 watt. Let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says. And uh, you see 2.6 expo 3 joules. Let's check our answer is right. Uh, 2.6 he says. Our answer is. Yeah, almost we are right 0 0.36 0 0.36 what what is our answer 0. Point, oops there is a problem you say the energy transferred mm -hmm. let me check the calculation because the answer is not matching so let's check so it's like uh, 45 I will hmm, ML. So it will be 45 divided by 1000. Okay, so this is the answer. You multiply it with the 5.7. So the answer is 0 0.25, 2, 0.25, expo 4. So it will be like uh, you multiply with 10 expo 4, you multiply it with the 1 over 4. Four zeros, yeah. Four, four zeros, yeah. So it will be two five six five. Two five six five. The energy should be two five six five. What I wrote? I made a mistake here. 
it's 2565. It should be 2565. Let me write here. So the energy here. Let me write here. Because in that paperwork, I have made some mistake, a little bit mistake. I don't know. And the energy is equals to M multiply L. So the mass is 45 divided by 1000 to convert it into, and then you multiply it with the L that is five, seven, one, two, three. Yeah. So the uh, final answer will be, it will be like this. Uh, it will be, what answer I got? I just, I have that on the printer. That is 2565. So the answer will be 2565. 2565 joules. That is the answer. So let's check from the marking scheme. Oh, yeah. 2565. Yeah, that's the right answer. And then he asked us to find out the rate of the. Of. Okay. Now I will here you know if you want to find out the rate of the energy we call it power the, the, that that is called power the rate of the transfer of energy that is power so the power will be equals to amount of the energy 2565 that was the value 2565 yeah and you divide it with the time and the time is 4800 seconds okay so let's do this on the calculator and let's check our answer is right so I will divide it with the 4,800 seconds. And it is 0 0.53 watt. 0 0.53 watt. Let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says? 0. Point, what is the marking scheme? Yeah. 0 0.53, 0. Point, what? Joules per second. It says the time duration. There is some problem. Time duration, I think. Let's count again. So if I have, yeah, the time duration is wrong. 10,800 second, you subtract uh, 3,600 second, and that is 7,200. The time duration will be 7,200. 7,200. Okay, so the time duration, when you subtract the... Uh, 3600 seconds from 10800. So the time duration will be 7200 seconds. That's a mistake. I made, somehow I made a mistake during this calculation. So now we are correcting it 2565. That is the energy change. And I divide it with the time taken. That is 7200 seconds. So it is 0 0.35. So the 0 0.356. So the my answer the rate of the zero point three five six uh, watt. This is the so this is how it's done. So hopefully you can see this. So on my paperwork I made a mistake. I don't know, but as that's simple because you see the human can make error and some number, especially the number which when I subtracted this time duration that went wrong and. I by mistake took it as 4800 second, but when you subtract 3600 from 10800, the time duration will be 72, uh, 72 uh, hundred seconds. So the the working is now clear, showing on your screen. I made a mistake. I'm sorry for that, but you can do it like this. I hope that this is clear now. So uh, let's move to the next part and let's see what's happened here. What is here? The graph in the figure 9.1 is steeper before the horizontal section that is that it is after. Use this observation to compare the specific heat capacity of the oil in the liquid and the solid state and explain your reasoning. You see the specific heat capacity uh, here. When the oil is in the liquid form, the the drop in the temperature is steeper 
you see it means the rate of the drop of temperature is quite uh, fast when the oil has become solid this graph is less steep which means the rate of the drop of the temperature is less it means that the it means that the temperature is dropping slowly when the temperature is dropping fastly it means that the specific heat capacity is when the temperature is dropping fastly it means the specific heat capacity is smaller so the oil in the liquid state have less specific heat capacity and here the temperature drop is very slow the rate of temperature drop is less so it means here the specific heat capacity is larger that's why the temperature drop is less this is the logic in this question you see the graph 9.1 is a steeper before the horizontal section than it's after use the, this observation to compare the specific heat capacity of the oil in the liquid and solid state as plain your reasoning okay so uh, let me show you my answer i have written also specific heat capacity of the liquid oil is smaller than specific heat capacity of solid oil temperature drops quickly when oil is liquid as compared to the oil in the solid form okay let's check the marking scheme and the marking scheme says specific heat capacity of the liquid oil is smaller than of the oil in the solid state the temperature decreases more quickly in the liquid state you see in the liquid state the temperature drop was very fast and in the solid state the temperature drop was slow so this shows that the specific heat capacity of the liquid state the oil is smaller and the specific heat capacity of the oil in the solid state is larger so okay so we will move to the next part and the next part is question number uh, 10 so here we go. Figure 10.1 shows a wire of length L and cross sectional area A and state how the resistance of the wire in the figure 10.1 depends on the length. The resistance of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire. And to the cross sectional area, the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area. So the next B part is. The cross-sectional area of a piece of metal wire is 7.5 x4 minus 4 centimeter square. The resistance of a 1 meter length of the wire, same wire is 6.4 ohm. The wire is made from the metal W on the figure 10.2 shows a solid cube of the side 10, 1 centimeter, sorry. It is also made from the metal W. Calculate the resistance between the two opposite faces A and B. If these two opposite faces are used, the length between them is one centimeter. So the cross-sectional area here, that's area it will be one centimeter multiplied one centimeter. That cross-sectional area will be one centimeter square. Calculate the resistance uh, between the two opposite faces A and B of the cube. Resistance is a two mark question and let's check the working which i have done let's see that this is that part the resistance is directly proportional to the length l of the wire resistance is inversely proportional to the area a of the cross section of the wire okay so this is the numerical let's increase the size okay so you know the resistance is normally given by the formula rho l by a and the rho if you make it alone it will be r resistance multiply area divided by length so R1, A1 by L1, and because both the wires, they are made of the same material, and you know the same material will have the same resistivity, we we'll say resistivity rho. So rho 1 and rho 2 both will be equal to each other because both the wires are made of, of the same material. So R1, A1 by L1 is equal to R2, A2 by L2. R1 is 6.4 ohm, A1 is 7.5 x per minus 4, uh, centimeter square and length one is one meter so one thing very important you should keep in mind that area i am taking in centimeter square and length i am taking in meters so on the other side the length should be in meter and the area should be in the centimeter square and the resistance is in ohm on both the sides the units of everything should be consistent the unit of the if the unit of the resistance on this side is ohm, on the other side it will be ohm. 
if the area of the cross sectional area of the wire on this side is in centimeter square on the other side the area of the wire should be in the centimeter square if the length of the wire on this side of the formula is in meter then the length of the wire on the other side should also be in the meter on the second wire its cross sectional area is 1 cm multiply 1 cm that will be 1 cm square the length of the wire is 1 cm so i will have to because i told you that the length must be taken in meter because on the right side sorry on the left side i have taken the length as 1 meter so on the other side 1 cm length should be converted into the meters so i will divide 1 cm with 100 it will be converted into meters so the r2 if you make r2 the subject of the formula these things will go on the other side so you will have 4.8 x power minus 4 divided by 100 4.8 x power minus 5 ohm let's check the answer so our answer is 4.8 x power minus 5 ohm so let's check the marking scheme what the marking scheme says 4.8 8 x power minus 5 ohm is the right answer. Hopefully, you have understood that how we have done this numerical. Especially, most of the students they don't understand the resistivity. The resistivity of a material depends upon its nature. So, if two wires have this are made of the same material, so both of them will have the same resistivity. So our answer is good. So we can move to the next part, and the next part is he says. the wire the wire in the part b is tapped to a meter loop on figure 10.3 shows that a 1 meter length of the wire resistance 6.4 ohm is connected in series with a switch a cell of electromotive force emf of 1.2 volt and a resistor of resistance 9.6 ohm you see here i have taken that 1 meter long wire and is connected on is is put on a fixed on a meter rule and with this in series i have connected another resistance that is 9.6 ohm resistance and here we have a switch and we have connected here a cell of 1.2 volt and the switch is closed he says explain what is meant by electromotive force electromotive force is always about the about the source of the electric energy electromotive force can be defined as the chemical especially for the cells you can define it like this that the chemical energy converted into electric energy when the unit uh, charge flows through the cell or another way of defining the electromotive force can be that it is the uh, and the work done by the cell to move unit charge in a closed circuit i have written this definition you can also uh, write here amount of chemical energy converted into electric energy when one coulomb charge flows through the cell that is called emf let's check the marking scheme what the marking scheme says uh energy or work done in driving a charge around a circuit or energy transfer to electric energy energy or work done per unit charge or energy divided by charge the formula is energy divided by charge that is the formula for the emf okay so let's move to the next part he says calculate the potential difference across the 1 meter length of the wire try to understand this this circuit is exactly like the circuit of a potential divider this is like the potential divider let me call this r1 and this r2 and he is asking what is the voltage across the r2 if this is r1 this is r2 is asking you what is the r uh, voltage across the r2 so by using the uh, formula of the potential divider i can tell you the v out the formula for the v out is r2 divided by r1 by r1 plus r2 multiply the voltage of the battery so i can show you my work and here we go so the v out is equals to So the V out will be equals to R two divided by the total resistance multiplied by the voltage of the battery. R two is six point four, and the total resistance is nine point six plus six point four, and multiply voltage of the battery is one point two. You just do this calculation. The final answer will be zero point four eight volt. Zero point four eight volt. Let me check the marking scheme. Zero point four eight volt. Zero point four eight volt. So our answer is right. so we have used the formula of the potential divider we have used uh, how to find out the v out f from r2 
so very simple okay so the next part is one uh, input terminal of an uh, oscilloscope is connected to a wire at the point p the zero centimeter mark of the meter rule the other terminal of the oscilloscope is connected to a sliding contact initially this contact touches the wire at the point p the y gain setting on the oscilloscope is 0 0.20 volt per centimeter so one centimeter on the graph of the oscilloscope on the y-axis is representing 0.2 volt. And he says the figure 10.4 shows the screen of the oscilloscope with the horizontal trace across the middle. So let me reduce the size so you can see it. And the question is the sliding contact is slowly moved along the wire until it reaches the other end of the meter rule. Describe and explain what happens to the trace on the screen. You see the voltage value was 0 0.48, 0 0.48, the maximum voltage drop. So when, and wait a minute, when this sliding contact is here, the V out will be zero. As you will move this sliding contact towards the right side, the R2 value will be increasing. So when the R2 value will be increasing, the V out will be increasing. It's a DC current. So, so what will happen? As you slide the contact, the sliding contact, from P, you move it towards the right side. The resistance, the length of the wire which is being used, that will increase and the resistance will increase. So the voltage drop, so the voltage drop across it will be. So you see at the start, the voltage drop will be zero and the trace will be on this x-axis. In, in this in the middle of the screen there will be a horizontal line and as you move the slider towards the right this this trace will move upward and when we know the maximum voltage drop will be 0 0.48 volt so divide it with this scale so for example uh, i divide 0 0.48 and i divide it with the scale the scale says 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 so 2.4. So this at the end, what will happen? This scale, this trace, which is horizontal, from this middle, it will go up and it will be at 2.4 centimeters. At the end, the trace will be a horizontal line, 2.4 centimeter above this uh, x axis, or you can say middle of the screen. I written this answer. I hope that you have understood this thing. Uh, let me show you my answer. You see, here is a three mark question. I think that the scale is 0 0.20 volt will be represented with the one centimeter, and we know the maximum voltage will be 0 0.48 volt. So, how much will be that on that uh, graph? It will be 2.4 centimeter. Initially, trace will be a horizontal line in the middle of the screen. Finally, the trace will be 2.4 centimeter above the middle of the screen. It will be a horizontal line when 2.4 centimeter above the middle line. I hope you have understood. Let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme says? Marking scheme says trace moves vertically away from the center line, moves at a distance of 2.4 centimeter, remains horizontal distance moved by trace trace directly proportional to the distance moved by the jockey jockeys that mobile contact or comment about the tape. I hope you are able to write this answer now. Okay, so uh, contact will add, finally, the contact will be 2.4 centimeter here and it will be a horizontal line. So it was, this was a three mark question. This is the graph. Okay. So this was that question, three mark question, and we are almost at the end of the paper. A second identical 1.2 volt cell is connected in parallel. The important thing is it's connected in parallel with the cell in the circuit in the figure 10.3. State one advantage of using two cells in parallel rather than a single cell. You see, when you connect two cells parallel to each other, they will support each other and what will happen if one of them will run out the other one will uh, uh, keep on providing providing the emf to the circuit and another very important thing is that uh, when two cells they are connected in parallel 
their life becomes longer. They last longer. You only have to write the statement here. And the second part, he says, state and explain the effect on the trace in the figure. Uh, C, third part of adding the second cell in parallel. You see, you might thought that the voltage will increase. But the important thing is when you connect two cells parallel to each other, identical cells parallel to each other. For example, each cell was individual uh, EMF was 1.2 volt. So when you connected two 1.2 volt cells in parallel to each other, the EMF of the whole combination will be still 1.2 volt because you connected them in in uh, parallel to each other. And when you connect them in parallel to each other, their EMF do not add up. So there will be no change on the trace which was on the CRO screen. So let's check what I have written. And the the cells will last longer. That was the EMF of EMF cells connected in parallel is equal to the EMF. There will be no effect on the trace. Yeah. So um, I think that uh, we are done. So today we have solved October, November 2020, Physics 5054-21 paper. In this video, in this session, we have uh, solved only section B of this paper. The section A of this paper we will solve in another video. And we will see uh, you soon. I will upload that video. So you will be able to find that video on my YouTube channel, the section A of this paper. So hopefully this was helpful to you and you have gained some knowledge out of it if you have so kindly don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and suggest these videos to your friends. So thank you very much. Have a good